Firstly, it starts with questions. What business uh, opportunities do people see out there? If you start with the technology, then it's always a recipe for failure. You never say, well, what can we do? You always start with the goal in mind. Uh, there's roughly three different sets of technologies that people can think about. So people tend to start with one of the three. One is enterprise information management. So the problem in that case is they have lots of different systems. They might, so it might be Excel or different uh, inventory systems or it might be a small business that's created through a couple of other businesses. So they have lots of different systems. I was talking to a company yesterday that has uh, purchased other small organizations across the Baltic region. And their problem is they just have, they can't get all the data together. They're doing it manually in Excel. So there are tools to help you integrate information, get a coherent view. Then there are what are typically called business intelligence tools, and that's for displaying the information. Uh, dashboards, making it easier to show what's going on. That's great for transparency. Because a lot of times people have the data, but people aren't actually doing anything with it, making sure that the executive have access. Even on the, in manufacturing, we've had some great cases where people have put the production figures up on a public dashboard on a, on a big TV on the wall and show people how they are progressing and how that compares to the company's goals. And the third area is finance, so enterprise performance management, everything to do with managing your finances uh, successfully. But financial indicators are very limited. They're lagging indicators, they only tell you what's gone wrong, not what's going to go wrong. If you're serious about running your business and your profits, you also have to take into account your operational activities, you want to know what your customers are doing, These are, it's all very valuable information about the health of your business, which is what your financial system is supposed to be about, and how healthy you are, are you going to survive in the future running your cash. But just looking about the money isn't enough. Yep, so there are predictive workbench tools that we, you can apply to your data. It, to be honest, most people are struggling with just getting the basic sets of information down. People can do a lot with just fairly straightforward statistical analysis, which you don't really need sophisticated algorithms for. But it's true that the, those are available. Um, uh, obviously fraud, uh, everything to do with mining large sets of data for insights, they, those are add-on tools to the basic business intelligence tool set. The, um, the one area that people that is the number one, you talked about this earlier, was finance. So uh, the, the planning and budgeting systems is typically what people are using Excel for today. And there's typically a very manual process that's often riddled with errors. You know, one, <laughs> we keep coming across, every time we do a proof of concept, we come in and we often find that people's macros have been wrongly written. So it's not taking account all of the rows or it's one column off and it's not until we come in and, and we, our figures are different from the existing figures that people realize that it's been a mistake in the past. So those are probably the number one use of smaller organizations. Insights into what you're doing well and not well is, is a recipe for competitive differentiation. When it comes to smaller organizations, uh, so a fun example about things going wrong, you reminded me of is a small dairy cooperative in the US and they uh, came out with what they called the Million Dollar Cheese Report. So this is, uh, they were having a problem with their cheese production. They have a large number of vats, this is Wisconsin in the US, and for some reason on a, an apparently random basis, some of their big batches of cheese wouldn't, curd, wouldn't set properly. And so the master cheese maker used, they actually have somebody called the master cheese maker, uh, used analytics to try and figure out what was going on, and they just couldn't figure it out. But when they did the correlations and they looked at all the temperature gauges and all of the different vats, they finally realized that one of the four vats was too close to the wall. And so in the middle of winter in Wisconsin, it would get down to minus 30. And on some days, that would be enough that the temperature in the vat would fall below a critical level and the cheese would go off. And they knew that because they would record, they had a, a record of the temperature in exactly. the vat. Exactly. So yeah. they finally would find yeah. the correlation. Yeah. Ah, look, this is what happened and this is why it's happened. The, uh, the other interesting thing about competitive advantage is one area I can say after working in this industry for 20 years that provides wonderful competitive advantage that both people don't immediately think about is sharing information outside the organization with their customers, partners and suppliers. Now people are often reluctant to do this because they don't trust the information or they're worried about what people were doing it. But if you're in a typical business-to-business -business situation, 
often if you can provide more data to your customers and suppliers, they can use that to optimize their business. It improves loyalty and increases your competitive differentiation compared to your competitors. So of all of the really great cases where people have used information to change their business, some of those are sort of extra net examples. So yes, bringing information back up the, up the supply chain is going to be very valuable. So supermarkets use us to gather information for their customers and then feed it back to their suppliers. Uh, another example is a medical distribution business, uh, again here in the Baltics, and they provide lots of products to hospitals and pharmacies, uh, chemists, and they, hospitals in particular, have great medical technology but don't often have great uh, supply chain systems. Right? Their, their back office technology is usually not that sophisticated. So I know in, the, in another case in the US, the the person distributing all the drugs was able to help the hospital optimize their buying. So they were buying different products in different departments and not being able to coordinate. But because they were getting it through all through the same distributor, the distributor had an overview that the hospital didn't have. So they could provide that data set along with the distribution services. Here's an example of what you can do right now. So let's say you have a spreadsheet with some sales information about your customers and you know where those customers are. Right now you can take that spreadsheet. Uh, there's a very simple web service available for free that gives your, ticks your addresses and gives you GPS coordinates. If you cut and paste that, put the GPS coordinates in the spreadsheet, you can go to bi.ondemand.com, sign up for a free account, upload that spreadsheet information, and then on your iPhone, access a free uh, application, Business Objects Explorer, and you'll be able to see instantly all of the data about your customers on your iPhone, on a map. Click on the map to go and drill into the information. So you get that for free, and then if you want more powerful access, you can do it on a subscriber basis. So you can start with just one person.